explain what that is. And I'm going to show you with all the littles because I believe Kobe doesn't know it. And little Millie over there, the, the clicker is actually too noisy for her. She doesn't care for it. So I'm going to explain what this is. I just said that. Why am I reintroducing what I just said? Okay. Let me just turn a light on. And that would have been good if I would have started with that. I lost a light bulb over here. Okay, this is how, for me, I have done this with, I think, probably every dog that I've had. But I also, this is a really big deal for reactive and for aggressive dogs. And the video I did, uh, let me get leashes on these guys while I'm saying this. The video I did where it was basically just me telling Harrison's story um, about how I trained, uh, I don't remember the title, the dog that almost killed me, something to that effect. That was how, Kobe, stop. That was how I got Harrison uh, to come into the pack, into my, Kobe, no. And I'm going to show you how I did that. I used clicker training with him, come here, Bobo, with him and my other dogs. And it's like the coolest thing. It really, come here, uh, who are you? Diamond, Diamond, hey forget it. Joey, come here. Good boy. Oh my God, you guys. <sighs> Why do I have this many little dogs? I will tell you little, um, God, I feel like my mom. Who are you? Kobe. Kobe will be adoptable soon. <laughs> Even though I just did a video yesterday of telling about how he bit. <laughs> He's a great dog. He's I'm just going to clean him up a little bit, clean up his attitude a little bit. Okay. Flooding the clicker. Let me explain what the clicker, the clicker is, are you shitting me? Did I not even bring, oh yeah, I did. It's just a marker. That's all it is. It just serves as a marker. So when I'm rewarding a dog with food or I'm paying them, with their daily food. Now keep in mind in the Leash Foundation course, that very first video, I teach um, hand feeding for eye contact. I do that with every single dog that I work with because it's so powerful. So if you don't know what that is, go there and check out that, check out that video or maybe it's somewhere here on YouTube, but I think the Leash Foundation course is the easiest. So when I'm, when I'm paying a dog with food, you'll always hear me say, yes, yes, yes. And I try to keep that consistent, yes. I want the dog to know what happened was exactly what I was looking for. So they hear that word and they automatically think, oh, okay, there's something good coming next because eventually I'm going to wean the food away and I'm just going to use my enthusiasm and my word. But in the beginning, I'm using that word. Here's the thing with a clicker. Oftentimes your vocals can change up. You know, you might have a bad day. You might be in a mood. You might be more like melancholy. And your yes might not be there or your dog just doesn't really know what it is. Like he came to me, he, how would he know what yes is? You know, maybe he knows what C is. <laughs> I don't know. You know, he had a Hispanic family before me. So this, all, all that is, is simply my yes. I'm still going to use the verbal yes. I will always use that. So I'll double it up. So I'll do click yes, or do it at the same time. Get out of my food. <sighs> So this is all that is, but this doesn't change its attitude ever. It doesn't have a bad day. It doesn't get pissy. It doesn't get melancholy. It doesn't like nothing. It's always the same. So when the dogs hear it, they're like, oh, something. Stop. Something good's about to happen. So here's the benefit to that. When you're working with reactive and aggressive dogs, this is such a valuable tool because Scotia Canada, we get our five-year-old dog. Oh, ee! I'm going to read these afterwards. Sometimes I try to grab them right in the middle because I'm always afraid I'm going to drop my Wi-Fi and then they disappear. Um, but I will read comments at the very end. And uh, just a little housekeeping real quick as I get into this. I'm doing this video because somebody asked for it. And also Sky, my um, one of my colleagues, she's 15 and she's learning how to be a trainer. Oh, she's here. My flipping phone died. I'm here now. <laughs> you missed nothing, Sky. Um, Sky is an up and coming trainer out in Mississippi, and she also works heavily in the dog rescue world. So, hey, I, I, I knew you were going to do that. 
No. Back up. No. Didn't even get to explain that. Okay. This little dude is resource guardy over a lot of things. Food, obviously. I have food sitting back here. Stop. But he's also resource guardy over like a person. So if he's sitting close to me, I don't let him sit close to me. Not ever. I don't let him sit close to me. And I don't ever have him on my lap because he's way too territorial. And so for him to sit next to me and then another dog walk up or sniff or be like, oh, what are you sniffing on? Causes that. So let me, I'm going to put him on a tie back. Come here. No, you're okay. We still love you. Yeah, I know. Start it off on a rough note. You're fine. Okay. Oops. Okay. Can you leave him alone? Just give him a little bit of space. He doesn't like you. Jeez, Kobe, read the room, brother. Okay. Oh, how do you not have a leash on? Come here. Sorry, guys. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. Where was I at? Housekeeping. I was going to ask something housekeeping, and I don't even remember what it was. So that totally threw me off. You're fine, Rambo. You're fine. Good boy. Rambo came to me from another local rescue here in Arizona. Oh, Kobe. Lord, me. How, do, how am I on? How's, I just was charging my phone. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to talk about dumb stuff because my phone might die. I'm doing the leash foundation. You have to sit right at your hip every time I have my dog. Um, let me get to that after. I want to make sure that I stay clicker related. Whoops. With this. Just for the sake of my phone potentially dying on us. Okay. Back to clicker. So all this is going to do is serve as a marker. Are you chewing on one of my clickers? I really hope you're not. In the beginning. So we're going to do it with Kobe right here. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. In the beginning... You do not need them to do anything. I just want him to know that this means food's coming. So I know that it's not going to be a big problem with these little dogs out here. Everybody, it would just be, or it was just with little Rambo. So I'm not going to ask for eye contact. I'm not going to ask for a sit. This is all I'm going to do. This is what flooding the clicker is right here. Click food. All right, Diamond's getting in on it. Click food. Click food. Click food. That's it. Once I start getting it, then I'm going to start doing. Yes. 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 That's it. That's flooding the clicker. Now they have an idea of what this means. So now this is equivalent to a yes. The, the beautiful thing about this is I, at some point I was talking about this. If I'm working the dog outside, this is a really, really great way to kind of get them. Like this morning, I was working little baby Utah. I was practicing his recall and he's out playing and, you know, kind of a long distance away and sniffing and doing, getting into the grass. And when I would call his recall, I'd say pronto. Oh, you little sneak getting into my tree pouch. <laughs> and when I would call his recall, the second that he turned, like I saw his ear flicker. I saw he heard me. I knew he heard me. But the second he turned to come to me, I instantly hit this so that it doubled up that encouragement of Whoop, I'm going. She wants me. So I wasn't using this to call him or to distract him. Stop it, Diamond. Away from the grass. I was using it as incentive to really, really get that. Oh, that's right. Because he knows when he hears this. That something good's coming, which is usually food, sometimes higher value food. So this is a really great tool to use to keep that engagement as you're building on it. Again, it's not to, to use in place of, or I mean, you could use it for a recall, you know, 
I'm sure you could, but you want to build that relationship because the day you don't have this is the day you're going to need it. So don't, don't ever rely on the tool. Just use it to build that relationship. So with my, and I'll tell you another story about another, uh, a gal that I trained virtually and what she did. Um, in just a second, I want to show you really quickly how I did this with my aggressive. So I didn't just, I'll, I'll specify, I didn't just take an aggressive dog that was food aggressive and all the other things and stick them, you know, in a crate and have other dogs sit next to them. We did all of the basics. We did all of the stuff that, you know, you guys have been seeing on this channel. So all of the leash foundation, all of the um, sit stays, we did place command, like all this stuff. The dog knew how to down. So it wasn't like he was just, you know, getting ready to attack. He just had the ability because he had done it before and he continued to do it after. But I had to get him to a really calm state of mind. So I did clicker training out here with him or in the other house. And we would do, he would do a down stain and click down, you know, all that stuff. Okay. It did it with the other dogs as well. Yes, Sky, don't rely on the tool. She knows that. And then I did it with the other dogs as well. Then after we had done it for a couple of weeks and everybody was really geared up towards it, then what I did was I put one dog in a crate. I actually used like X-Pen fencing, but it's the same stuff as this. It's just like all unfolded. Cobes, can you get in a crate? Somebody, you guys, we're on the live, come on. You know what to do. Okay, you know what? Millie is in the crate and we're just gonna use Millie. Even though, she doesn't really like the sound of the clicker. So that's the other thing. This black clicker I have right here is, is pretty, pretty loud. This little finger one that I have over here is not. And you can buy them so that they're, you can hear a difference, so that they're less dramatic. They don't have that, that quite that pop because some dogs, it does trip them out. They don't care for it. Um, Millie happens to be one of them. So I'll just show you from kind of a little bit of a distance. I will pretend like she loves it and like she's uh, gonna play with us. Okay, let me see here. Who could I use? Hi, Mill. Millie, we'll use the light one. You don't care about this. So all I did was I would have, off topic, but I'm gonna have to earn that hoodie. Pre oh, girl, say no more. Kobe, take a hike. Why did I bring you out here? You little shit. Okay, down, or sit, I'm sorry, down. So these these are, this is the how I set up working with the aggressive dogs and how I made that pack cohesive and how I introduced them. So I, uh, uh, right here, I have dogs on the outside in a down stay and I had the duck, could you stop? Oh, joke down, Joey. dog on the inside is in a down stay. Now, again, I, that was, that was the, the game was they're working together. Oh Lord. You guys, if you could see Kobe right now, you would cry for me. He's just being a real pain in the, you know what? So here's the thing. When the dogs, when they're in command, a known command, right? He knows what a down is. I've asked him to do it. We'll pretend like this was Harrison. Harrison knew what a down was. I asked him to do it. When they're in a known command like this, and then you reward them for said command, Kobe, beat it. You were my worst choice. How am I, how am I supposed to adopt you out and really talk you up when you're just a pain in the you know what? You're a reflection of me. Stop making me look like a jackass. Who's in the way? Everybody's in the way. Kobe, no, sit. If you want to be involved, you do a command. Thank you. Uh-uh. Good, down. Good. And I literally would go through everyone. Everyone. Click for you. They're not doing anything different. Click for you. A click for the one in there. Every. I mean, I, I would do this for like 15, 20 minutes until the whole pile of food was gone. We'd go through everybody in the lineup and they thought this was the greatest thing. And so I continued to do it with many, many dogs after 
after the fact when I had one that may be a little rough around the edges. This is all we did. And this is, this is considered, even though there's kennel fencing here, we're still working together. We're still, everybody's in command. Everybody's in position. And that noise, man, that noise really, really keeps them involved because they know what's coming and they're excited about it. Okay. So that's, that's one way. That is not the only way. That's just one way with one little tiny uh, protocol that I do when I'm working with dogs that may have had some aggression and I'm, I'm trying to build that pack bond. That's a great way to do that. You don't have to have the clicker to do that. It's good to do that without it, but it's, it really is. It, it gets a lot of response. The other one that I want to tell you about with reactive dogs, and this is something I'm going to document with Joey because Joey is still, he's not great on a leash. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I take that back. He's great on a leash. He is still highly reactive to other dogs and people. And, <clears throat> and he's had a lot of exposure. I've done a couple different protocols. It's, uh, I think truly it's just a matter of he's one of those because he's so smart. Joe, he is so smart and he needs his brain stimulated a little bit more than what he gets with me. So that's my fault for that. But this is such a good, a good way to stimulate, to stimulate that brain. So it's the same kind of concept when you're out, you practice this in your yard. You practice what the clicker is, right? Click food, click food, click food. So then periodically, as you're walking through the yard, you kind of just use it when your dog is doing something. I am so sorry. I cannot concentrate with you doing that. And I'm going to have to put you on a tie back because you're literally ruining the whole video. I feel like that mom that just giving her kid a sucker to stop him from being. No, stay there. You're going to have to stay in that place, but okay. Seems like these videos are going backwards. I should not have brought all these little dogs out here today. We were just in the backyard and I was like, oh shit, I want to get back to you. Okay. So if I'm in the backyard with little Joey, I would have his leash on him and I would just walk around with him. Anytime I get eye contact from him, anytime he looks up at me, whether it's from me making a kissy noise or he just does it just to do, anytime I'm going to click in food. Anytime he gives me attention, click food. Then I'm going to start practicing getting his attention on command. And so that can be really different things for you. Like that's why I do a lot of hand feeding for eye contact. You could use his recall. You could use the dog's name, but you want to get that dog's attention on you on command. So that might be me just saying, Joey, as soon as I get eyeballs from Joey, click food. So now if I have a reactive dog and I'm struggling with him, this is not, remember, stop diamond. That's enough out of you. You know not to do that. You guys are pushing my buttons. I mean, I'm over it right now. Don't. Thank you very much. Look at that little guy. Tater looks for the kissy noise. Oh, Tater. Um, I lose my train of thoughts when I do that. What was I talking about? What was I just talking about? Oh, outside. Oh, with reactive reactivity. Okay, so now working with little Joey out and about because people walk him by or another dog, he starts to do this grumble. He start, And I know he's going to do it. And he ends up like, it's like two or three times. And then he just kind of has to get it out of his system, which is such a nuisance. And again, it's not him. It's me. That's a whole, that is always, always owner error. And it's because he's not getting enough brain work. So we got to do more stuff. So this is something that I'm going to start implementing and I'll document it moving forward. So you guys can see what this looks like. But once we get that, he understands, okay, when, when she says, Joey, I need to look at her because something good's happening. So now when I'm on that leash and I'm walking him periodically, same thing, Joey. And I'm going to reach down as I'm walking him, as I'm walking him, I'm going to reach down and Joey, he gives me eyeballs and I'm going to do this. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but it works. And I did this with Billy. Actually, he's got a really, Billy and Kevin both. And now when they hear dogs bark, instead of going to the bark, they literally look up, for, look up to me because they used to both lunge and go bananas when dogs would bark. This is a good idea. This reminds me. Somebody remind me in the comments to do a video on this because this is something you really should see. 
But because we did so much quicker training that instead of doing that, their response is to look towards me. Does that make sense? So we reconditioned what dogs barking and what that stuff, that stimulus meant. So instead of being like obnoxious and pulling and trying to get at it, the, the known command is when I hear that, I better look to her. And this was not correct. I didn't do corrections for this. I literally just flooded the clicker. And every time we'd get close because I knew where these dogs would bark. So when we get close to there and the dogs started knowing, you know, the dogs remember where dogs are going to bark or what fences, I would start doing clicker training. Billy, quick food, quick food. Yes, quick food the whole time. And I wouldn't pass through there with them going bananas. I would stay, you know, we had a, a kind of like there was a line in the sand. You know, I knew if we crossed that line, the dogs were going to lose it. They weren't ready. So we would do everything before that line. And then every day we'd tow the line. Every day we'd get a little closer. Every day we'd get a little closer. Every day we'd get a little closer until now we get to that place and they know it's coming. I don't use this anymore. And as soon as they hear those dogs bark, they both, when I'm walking them separately or periodically, they look up to me. They look up to me as opposed to anything else. And I reward, I always reward for that. I always, always, always reward for that because it's such a big deal. And now there's, so now when I do that, it's not just that particular area. It's different dogs. Whenever they hear dogs, especially Kevin, Kevin really, really picked up on it because Kevin, remember Kevin's the more fearful of the two. Billy's the one that's super, super bold. He's very gusto. I just got to like go do backflips and see what everybody's doing. And he's too much. And Kevin's the one that will perform those same intense behaviors, but it's because he's trying to get out of the situation or, you know, do something before somebody does something to him because it's just too terrifying for him. So Kevin gives me that behavior a little bit more anyway. Okay. So that's, that's a couple of things that you can do with clicker training. The, the reactivity one, the, the reason I said it can be a little tricky is because you don't want to utilize it to get the dog's attention off of the stimulus. Because remember, if your dog already starts reacting and then you throw this in, it's a huge mistake because then you've just told that dog like, that's a great job. You losing your shit at the end of the leash is exactly what I want you to do. So you got to be very, very careful. You got to start all of this in no stimulus. Start it in your backyard. Start it in your garage. Start it in your kitchen. Work your way out to the sidewalk. Work your way. Don't start doing, don't do it three days and be like, okay, we're ready. We're going to, there's the dog's bark and your dog starts, the hackles go up and it starts to grumble. And then you throw this in. Your battery's about to die. Your dog's going to respond to it, but you're, you've, you've missed that timing and it's going to get sloppy. Re don't do sloppy. Take your time. We don't cut corners with dog training. Don't cut corners. Everything matters. Same as going to the gym. Can't cut corners. Results are going to show, right? Joey, he's one of, one of the smartest little terriers. The only reason that he's still struggling on a leash is because I haven't put the time in because when I get big dogs like Billy and Kevin and Kuma, and, you know, the ones that, <laughs> that really need work, a little terrier like this, unfortunately, gets pushed to the back of the burner. That doesn't mean that he doesn't get work or all of that, but he gets more pack walks than he does individualized training. He gets more group training and he needs some more solo stuff, just more time consuming for me is all. So anyway, if you're local and you're in the area and you want to help me out, you are more than welcome to come and practice and help. I would love that, especially with these small dogs. Okay, so I think that's all. Let me check comments real quick before I wrap up so that I make sure that I don't miss anything. Okay, um, let's see. <laughs> My dogs don't resource guard against me, but he does do it to other people and dogs. Okay, hold on, did I miss something? When doing leash foundation, have them sit right here. Oh, Marshana, that's that's totally placement. For me, I want everybody, like if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. So I want my dog right there at my hip. It just makes other, other, um, it makes other, what do you call it? Doing other commands. Did you ask that in the group? Because I, I saw that today. So if you're looking for that response, I replied to it today. And then, okay, my dogs don't resource guard against me, but he does do it to other people and other dogs. Um, 
So something like that, it's resource guarding is a lot of it. It's not a one trick thing. It's a lifestyle. There's a lot of things that go into play with that. Like this little guy, he's been to one of the most elite board and trains here in Arizona. He did that before he came to me. He knows his commands. He knows a lot of stuff. Um, he has, there's, there's not really there. The only time that something like that would happen is when I, I misjudge a situation. So his lifestyle is, is pretty structured. Um, what he needs more of is exposure. That's what he needs more of. So he needs more of being out and about and, and being around other dogs and rehearsing the commands so that doing stuff like what he just did earlier in this video isn't, it doesn't like the, the value, the thing that is that value, the most valuable to him isn't that valuable. And it doesn't hold that high a value. Is that making sense? Stop it. It doesn't hold that high a value anymore. I mean, you want it to, but I'm, I'm sorry. He's super distracting. Um, I got to get him off this. I can't, I can't concentrate. I can't concentrate. That's not what I wanted to say because that was totally geared towards my dog and my situation. So what I meant to say is with what you have going on, that might be more of a um, consultation to kind of figure out what else is happening with what's your day to day look like for, for your dog. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing every single day? What commands does your dog know? How much are you putting into your dog? All of those things play a part. So I'm going to leave that right there. Otherwise, I'll go down a rabbit hole and my phone will die. Um, I think that was it. Is that it? That's it. Rob Wolfpack. <laughs> um, let's see. Sky. Rob, Toby likes to work as a pack. Oh, that's awesome. We miss the bad behavior when they get when they get it. When they get ill. What did I miss? Tater. Oh, we miss the bad behavior when they get oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because there's nothing to work with, right? I want to come help. Oh, Sky, get out here, girlfriend. Seriously, that would be so great. Okay, that's it, you guys. The leash foundation course. Um, you could see Marshana was asking earlier, the leash foundation course, I have a private Facebook group and that's where we do a lot of like team building. So anybody that's in that group, you're welcome to join the, the Facebook group. I'm sorry. Anybody that's in the course, you're welcome to join the Facebook group and you can post videos of, of questions, of progress, of success, of failures, of I'm stuck with this because when I can see it, I can fix it. And so a lot of times if somebody's struggling with something, I'll say, well, shoot a video, post it in the group. Let me see what it looks like. And it's just the, the body mechanics. It's the vocals. It's the energy. It's, it's all of that stuff. So when I can see it, then I can duplicate it and I can say, okay, I'll, I'll shoot a video. I'm like, okay, this is where, this is what you're doing, but this is where you need to be. You're super close or, you know, whatever it is. And then I'll do it and I'll, I'll show that person. And then I can give them feedback in that group. So it's, it's like having, you know, it's just more access to me, but it's also more access to people that have already been through it and they can also give you feedback. It's a really, it's a great, I love it. I think it's awesome. So that was what Marshana was asking. So if you're interested in the Leash Foundation course, or that's where, you know, you're stuck or you need some help, it's always a good place to start. And it's 20 bucks, some videos. I'll throw the link in the description below this video. Um, it's just leashfoundation.com. And then I think, honestly, I think that's it. I don't think I had anything more. It was just flooding the clicker today. And of course, you know, we had some whatever happen. So if you want to go back and watch that, you can see Rambo get funky with uh, Kobe because he got too close. So more, it's just more stuff that I have to work them through. It's not, it's certainly not because he can't do it or he doesn't know how. Um, one of the things with, that I will tell you with Rambo, whenever I bring a new dog in, it takes him three weeks before he like just kind of accepts him as the pack. I have to have a leash on Rambo. I have to micromanage him because he just doesn't take well to new dogs. And we have to do pack walks repeatedly. So there was a couple dogs that he, he liked a little short with. It didn't take quite three weeks, but that's kind of his average. So um, Kobe hasn't been with us that long. So, you know, there's, I don't know what that, what that does. Anyway, it's just, it's just part of his personality. Um, he was going to get euthanized. I went to the vet the day that they were going to euthanize him. I was just beside myself. 
he's 15 pounds. He's supposed to be 10, but he's, he's a little flipping peanut. He's like the funniest dog. I mean, yeah, he's got that little resource guardy stuff that still needs a little bit more work and a little tweaking, but he's such a great dog. He's, and he's so happy. He's so happy all the time. I love him. I think he's dynamite and he knows a lot of commands and he's fun to work with. And, uh, the rescue that was going to euthanize him is a multi-million dollar nonprofit, multi-million. They're not like me. Like I'm a nonprofit, but it's just me. It's just me and my, you know, I'm running out of my own pocket. And then you guys, like whenever you guys donate, that always helps. They're a multi-million dollar. <laughs> and it was, uh, I found out through a friend the day that they were, cause I knew of the dog. I had, I was part of his training program at the, at the board and train that he was at. And no one was going to tell me, no one was going to tell me everybody's ego was too fucking big. No one was going to tell me because they knew that I was going to have shit to say about it because I don't believe in behavioral euthanasia. That dog's fucking rad. He's such a cool dog. He's such a cool dog. And that rescue that was going to do that, they made sure to tell the people involved, please don't tell the public. We don't want our followers to know. (laughs) What kind of shit is that? Well, I just, I, they're a nonprofit, they're a no kill, they're a no kill rescue, just like me, only they have this magnificent facility up in North Scottsdale. And I know, cause I went and walked their facility before. So I called the lady the day that it was happening. And, um, I didn't bitch her out by any means. I just offered to help. I said, let me, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you, I had already, I had already offered everything to that woman before, like two months before I said, I'll try train your staff for free. I'll show you how to work with him because he was sitting in the kennel 18 hours a day because nobody wanted to get him out. He was just too, he was resource guarding. Again, let me tell you, this is not a Harrison. This is a 15 pound dog. I like fucking take the bite and put a leash on the dog. The end, like just start walking. That's all you got to do. It's not that big of a deal. I had offered so many services to her. And then I offered when you do find a home, let me know because those that family is going to need to know how to train. That family is going to need to know what to do with him. Four times they she tried to rehome him, never once called me. And so the phone call I had with her when I found out it was two o'clock on that day that they were going to euthanize him, and it was like twelve when I, or maybe eleven. And I go, Melissa, what are you doing? <laughs> That's how I said. I go, what are you doing? I just found out. And she's like, Coco, don't. I just we can't do it. He's we can't do it. He's we've tried to rehome him four times. And I go, let me help you. I know you have, like, their kennels at this facility are, like, big, huge walk-in kennels. They're not, like, kennels. They're, like, state-of-the-art, ceiling-to-floor, walk-in. You can just, they're magnificent. It's brand new. It's beautiful. And I'm like, can you just keep them in a kennel? Let me figure something out. I was on my way to the vet to stop another euthanasia that a dog had, I actually had a home for, and the owner was, anyway. And this was when Harrison broke my hand. So I'm driving with broken hands. My mom's in the passenger seat. And I'm telling this lady, I'm like, ah, just don't just put him in one of those. And she's like, no, he can't. Nobody will work with him. He's not. This is what she said. He's not welcome here. They pulled him off the streets. And because that he became and I, too much trouble for them, he's no longer welcome. And I'm like, what, do you, what the fuck does that mean? He's not welcome here. She goes, he's not welcome here. And I go, Melissa, I know the kennels that you have. Will you just hold him in one of those? Let me get this day finished. And I have like my followers understand what this stuff's all about. I said, let me see what I can drum up. Just give me 24 hours. Nope. He's already been processed out of the system. And I go, so reprocess him back into the fucking system. Like who, how, I, I don't even get what that, like, how that holds value to anything anyway. And so, um, as I'm doing this, I'm, I have her on speakerphone. I look over at my mom and my mom's going, just go get him. Just go get him. Fuck her. Just go get him. (laughs) Like, mom, I can't take another one. I don't even have working hands right now, (laughs) but there, she was giving me nothing. There was nothing. There was absolutely nothing. It was, I was just, and she started crying and she goes, don't think that this doesn't, this doesn't hurt Coco. You can't, you can't imagine how hard this is. And I was like, Oh girl, you don't, you're talking to the wrong person looking for empathy or sympathy with this situation. And I just said to her, and I go, the reason that this sucks and that you're crying right now is because you know, in your gut that this is totally fucked up. 
this is a complete waste of a life because you want to get some sleep and you don't want to learn a new skill. How are you going to own a dog rescue and not know how to fucking work a dog? I mean, maybe not to that degree, maybe not to what I do, but how are you going to be a nonprofit with millions of dollars and not market the shit out of that dog for help, for help? You know, you could do Facebook ads and run $5,000 to a Facebook ad and have it blown all over the country, all over the world, asking for help and you will find help. Like you can put paid for ads towards things anyway. And I, that was the end of it. And I just stopped and I was like, forget it. What vet, where, where is he going? I'll meet him in the parking lot. Just tell the owners that I'll be there. Don't go in. I'll meet him in the parking lot. And so that's what I did. And I had no intention. Like, um, I don't plan on rehoming him because he is a pill in that regard. Like that stuff doesn't bother me at all, you know, and it's not, it's very, very few and far between. That's not a constant. That's not something that he does often, but I know a lot of people don't want to work with that and it takes a, a special person to want to, but that doesn't mean you fucking kill a dog. You're like, he doesn't get to live anymore. That little butterball doesn't get to live because you don't know how to put a leash on him and tell him no. It's a joke. I will never in my lifetime. I will never, ever. I won't. I just won't. I will never, ever be able to side with that kind of shit. You make a commitment. You see it through. You follow it through. You follow it through. So anyway, if someone wanted him at this point, I love him too much. Ha ha. He's mine. He stays with me. Okay. You guys, I just went off on a tangent. You got me all hyped up about my Rambo story. That's the end. Oh, you want to ask for anybody that's still here? This is, well, Joey, get off that if you don't like them doing that. Come on. Get off of it. You don't need to be there. You put yourself on there, not me. Um, what I, something I want to ask you, totally off topic. Anybody that wants to give me feedback can. It's not thumbnails. So when I do lives, I don't take the time to do, I don't take the time to do like an edited, thumb, edited thumbnail for it. I mean, I still can and I should, but I'm just doing them on the fly. And so I, I don't have like a pre, when I do thumbnails, now the thumbnail is the picture on the video. Like as you're scrolling through, through YouTube and you see a picture, what for you guys that are here or that have made it this far, when you see pictures, what is something that you click on? Like when I do thumbnails, I try to get an action shot that replicates what's going to happen in the video. Because when I'm scrolling, very little do I actually read a title. I, I'm just looking at the picture. And if the picture is what I was looking for or similar, then I'll look at the, then I'll look at the title. So I'm desperate to know what other people's feedback is on that. Like what are, like when you look through mine, but the one I did yesterday of Kevin, you know, it was him going to bite my face. He actually did that when I was trying to do bite work with him. And so I thought that was a good thumbnail. You know, I thought it was something that kind of replicated what I was. Is that something that anybody would click on? Or are you like, I eh, can't really even tell what's going on. Or a lot of people, and this is marketing. A lot of people know from a marketing standpoint that when the human is looking at the camera, that that draws you in. So, and that's, just, that goes for me. Like, even if it's somebody I don't like or like, you know, a trainer that I'm not real thrilled about when that person's face is on that picture, I know I'm more likely to click on it or pay attention to what's going on in that video or like, Ooh, what's that? Because I got a person looking at me. So anyway, I'm just interested to know what your guys' feedback is on that because I really like the thumbnails are something I really have to get better at. As much as I hate, I hate doing them so much. I cannot tell you how much I hate them. Like really more than anything. I really hate doing thumbnails, but because I hate it the most, that's what I have to work on the hardest. And all I want to do is train dogs, but it's not, it's pointless to do all this and put it out there if it's not going to get seen. So I have to get like help, you know, I have to market and get it seen. Tom Davis is the master of the thumbnail. Yeah, he, I mean, see, and I don't like his shit. I mean, I like his training. I don't like his thumbnails. I don't think that they're, you know, where he got that, where he got his from the guy, um, the guy over in the UK, what's his name? Fenrir. He's like a heavier set guy, Fenrir. So what they've been doing, and I do some of it because you have to follow what's trending and what's working, right? That's part of like marketing for it is doing um, the Fenrir guy started that where they would outline the body and 
but they get clicks. Tom does because now he his channel blew like his channel really took off over the summer. Um, but what they do is they outline the body and then they outline it in yellow. And for right now, for whatever reason, that seems to be working like that's drawing people in. Um, but I don't think Tom's stuff shows. I mean, you're right. You're right. I'm just my ego is getting the best of me because I hate his thumbnails. I don't I really don't care for them. But you're right. They do get clicks and his his channel is blowing up. But he's also he's got you know, he's got good content and rightfully so. You know, he's he's worked really, really hard at choreographing, you know, and getting I shouldn't say that not choreographing, but doing, you know, all the professional, you know, the professional videography behind it, as has the Fenrir guy, like they both have. And that's great, but that's not everything. I'll do it. Yeah, Sky, I want you to. That's why I was asking you about Photoshop before. I want you to do my my thumbnails for me. But those, so those guys, where they're at, they're to a place where they can afford to hire other people to do their editing and do all all of that, which is fine. I can do it myself. You know, when you're broke, you got, when you're broke and you can't afford anybody, you have to do it yourself. So you're right, Sarah. You're absolutely right. Damn it, Sarah. Ah. Yeah, Tom, Tom Davis and Fenrir, they both have really good thumbnails. And you're, you're right, because they are action shots. They are outlined. I just like the more. See, that's, where, that's why I'm asking. And I'm still pushing back when it's the stuff I like. doesn't matter what I like. It's what, what gets views. Because I like the ones that just look like a live shot. Like it's a real, like, because I know I'm going to see that in the video. I don't like the ones that are all doctored up. But there's so much saturation out there that you're right. Okay, well, anybody else that's watching this, they're definitely not my favorite, but they get clicks. Yeah, you're totally right. I, yeah, okay. Point taken. Also, how's Ducky? Tell her I love her. Sarah is fostering little Ducky, and she's so great. And Sarah is such a good dog trainer, and it's awesome watching them. Little Ducky is a Jack Russell mix, and she was given to me when I went to go pick up the, those Chihuahua puppies. I wasn't even... I was going to pick up two Chihuahua puppies. Let me tell you that story real quick. Two Chihuahua puppies, just two. And I don't speak Spanish. The person that was giving them to me doesn't speak English. So he texted me and I did my best to translate. And I was like, okay, he wants me to go get them. They're ready because they were just brand new when I saw them. So they didn't want them. It was an accidental, accidental litter. She's enjoying chewing on her place, but oh, nice. And I go to pick up the two puppies and there's three puppies um, they can't be away from the mom. So I ask for the mom. So I take the mom and then the neighbor walks out. <laughs> and at this point, this is like back late fall and winter. I became the Chihuahua lady around here. And <laughs> the neighbor walks out with Ducky, who's this little Jack Russell Chihuahua and hands her to me. So I've got a load of puppies. And then she hands me one more and Ducky just like pees and poops all down me. And I'm like, what, what am I doing with what? And the gal goes, oh yeah, we don't want her. We can't keep her. <laughs> All right. I wasn't going to say no at that point because I know the life that those dogs live up there. So I was like, okay, one more. And I love Ducky, but Sarah's fostering her now. So she's up for adoption and I will update the website because I lost my web design girl um, several months ago. And I haven't been doing anything on the website because I don't know how to. So that means I've got to learn to do that because I can't afford anybody right now. So I'll update the website so that those of you that are on YouTube that aren't on Instagram or TikTok, where I post all those dogs, when you go to the website, you can see that stuff. That's something I do need to do. Mental note. Okay. Anybody else that wasn't live? I don't like the thumbnails that are misleading. The clickbait. Yeah. I mean, the clickbait thumbnails, those, and you know, I mean, I personally don't do those because that they're you can lose your channel, like Instagram, or I'm sorry, Instagram, YouTube. It's like a huge no, no to do. So if you, a clickbait photo would be like, if I posted a picture of myself in a bikini and then, you know, the title was check this out. And then you go into the video and it's just me training dogs with no bikini. That's clickbait. Cause you tricked me. I, I came to this cause you said you were in a bikini and now you're not. Um, so yes, there is, and I'm only saying that because I do have a thumbnail of me in a bikini. But in the video, I am in a bikini because I'm teaching the dogs to go in the pool. The one about the tools. Oh, Sarah, what'd you say before that? I missed it. Hold on. Let me see. Um, I just looked at your page and the Beckman one is my favorite. <gasps> me too. 
Okay. Good feedback. Thank you. That was my, yeah, I thought that one was really good too, because I had Billy's face in it. I had my face in it. It was like close up. It was more, and I think that was more engaging than, um, and I did, I Photoshopped, you know, I did the colors and like outline that stuff. Um, that was more engaging and that took me forever to do, which means ugh, I've got my work cut out for me. Okay. Thank you for, thank you for that feedback. Anybody else that's seeing this, if you by chance made it this far, oh my God, we're 45 minutes in you guys. How does this happen? Please give me feedback, whatever. Tell me what kind of thumbnails you like, or if there's a channel whose thumbnails that you particularly like. That would be that would be super helpful. It helps me. It just helps me figure out what's working and what's not working. Yeah, Beckman's good. He's really good. He's like a no nonsense. This is what it is. The end. I'm not trying to be your friend. Also love your work too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Where can we support you? Super chat not working for me. Um. Oh, I forgot about super chat. Interesting. Uh, hand handoverrover.com. I have, thanks Coco, fantastic. We love your work. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks Rob, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, you guys, you know, if you want to support, I totally appreciate that. And part of me building this channel is because financially, I've got to figure out how to better support these dogs. I can't just keep bringing all these dogs in with no like sponsorships or anything because I don't have any of that. And so that's what the channel is for, but it doesn't pull in, you know, more than just a couple hundred bucks at this point. There's not really, there's it, nothing to write home about. That's for sure. Um, but if you want to help donate towards, you know, the videos or just the rescue in general, because I am a 501 C three, if you go to handoverrover.com, there's a donate button right on the page or, or you can use Venmo, which is handover Rover. Um, and I think Zell. If I do Zell for the Bank of America handover rover, but those are the two easiest ways. The website's international, and I know a lot of people don't have Venmo. So anybody, you know, the website's for anybody. Um, but thank you. I appreciate that. That's anything, everything helps. I will tell you that everything, everything helps. And I always forget about the super chat stuff. And I don't have a Patreon account. Oh my God, you guys, I'm losing my marbles. There's so many things that have to be done still. Oh, well, okay. We're making progress. Rambo's awesome. Kobe's getting there. Diamond's a dream, and Joey is my fault. Thanks. Kendall for Rover. Hand, oh, I'm sorry. Hand over Rover. You know what? I bet you didn't. How would you know that? Because I don't have that anywhere. So I'll put it in the description. The name of my rescue is Hand Over Rover. Like literally, hand over your dog. If your dog's name is Rover, which most dogs, you know. Oh, and Amazon wishlist, Cassie. Thank you. I wonder, do I have my Amazon wish list on my website? I think I do. I'll check all that. Man, you guys were doing.